Hello, everybody. My name is Sid Suri, and I'm the head of marketing here at Sendbird. I'm really excited to be here today with you all and talk a little bit about what we're doing to help mobility companies with uh, mobile communication, um, really to help them improve their key business metrics, um, such as order cancellation. So let's dive right into it. Ride sharing and food delivery have really taken over the world in the last couple of years. I would say the first wave of ride sharing over the last 10 years, and then in the last couple of years with food delivery, and especially during the pandemic, we've really seen food delivery come into its own and absolutely explode in volume. Um, and I'm gonna to touch a little bit on both of these uh, industries today and how um, they can leverage mobile communication to improve their, their key business metrics. Food delivery has really grown over the last 12 months. And with any kind of hyper growth situation, you're gonna get problems. This was a survey done by a firm not too long ago of about 2000 uh, delivery customers and up to 50% of orders had late deliveries. 37% had the wrong order. I mean, that we can all imagine that kind of frustration. 33% uh, where the driver needed directions and 14% where the food didn't arrive. And uh, that's just crazy when you think about it. And this is such a major cost area for delivery companies because when that food doesn't arrive or it arrives incorrectly, the delivery company pays the driver, pays the restaurant and refunds the customer. It is a triple whammy. Um, so it's a massive, massive cost line item. So fixing this um, is, is, is super important to these folks. And it's, it's not very different on the ride sharing side. When that ride doesn't show up your, or it shows up late or misses the, the customer because you know it was a busy busy corner or the customer wasn't exactly where they said they were going to be um what ends up happening again is you pay the driver and refund the customer because the competition is so fierce so a canceled transaction or a canceled order um or an order where either party is unhappy is a massive cost item um to these companies and right now you know, the primary way, if at all, that there's any kind of communication between the stakeholders to help fix this issue is really through SMS. So a lot of SMS and phone calls gets used in these situations where, you know, you're missing the driver, you're missing the delivery provider and, and phone. And, you know, this is a wave that started maybe 10, 15 years ago, and it's really, really easy to um, to send SMSs now, and we all we all use SMSs every day in our personal lives, so we're used to getting those text messages. But if I don't mind saying so, SMS is an outdated and terrible experience. It's just a bad experience for business to consumer conversations. For for personal conversations, it's great, right? You want to talk to your friends, you want to talk to your family. And even that is really moving away from SMS and moving to richer platforms like WhatsApp um, and uh, iMessage and Telegram and Kakao and um, Line and WeChat and everything else. But you know, the even while it's okay a little bit for personal communication, for business communication, business to customer or business to business, it's just a terrible, terrible um, uh, channel. Um, if you look at some of these screens, um, it's hard to look at it and say, this is the experience I want to give my customer. That customer that I fought so hard to acquire, when they run into any kind of glitch, this is the experience I want to give them. It's almost, you know, it's almost, uh, you know, kind of almost ludicrous to say, um, but this is really what passes for most of customer communication these days. And let's just talk through a little bit of what's so bad about it. You know, one is there's no identity. Usually it's from a phone number you don't recognize that people don't want to respond to or they don't want to give their phone number to. Um, you're not quite sure who it is. You may not trust it. Um, you have no control of the experience. And I'm not just talking about the brand. I mean, the brand experience is really important. Design and color and logos and things like that are very important. 
but more so you don't have any control over the actual conversation. Was bad language used? Was the driver rude? Was the customer rude? Um, is, there, is, is there some training that can be done on how to talk to customers? You don't have access to any of that information and you don't have the analytics or the data. It's hard to say, you know, did conversations with a good sentiment turn into a saved transaction, right? All those kind of analytics that you wanna run on conversations and all this wealth of customer data you're capturing, you can't do so because the conversation is happening on a third party platform. It's happening on Facebook's platform. It's happening on Google's platform. It's not happening on your platform, on your app. So there's some fundamental reasons why SMS is pretty flawed when looking as a business to customer channel. And you know, this isn't just about brand and design. This hits the hard metrics. Poor communication with your customer is bad for business. It leads to decreased order completion rates because the delivery provider and the driver and the, you know, all these stakeholders could not connect with the customer at the when they needed to. It leads to increased support costs because now those customers are getting on the phone to call the call center. Um, and it leads to poor customer satisfaction. So it's really a bad experience all around. And the truth of the matter is traditional support channels are too slow to help. Mobility, and I talk about ride sharing and delivery, happen in real time. These are hyper local, hyper fast transactions that happen um, at a moment in time. And if they're disrupted, they're sort of gone forever. And if you think about where contact centers have come in the last 20 years, it's phone calls, it's emails, and it's web self-service websites. And none of those apply here. So this entire massive infrastructure that's been built up for call centers is not relevant suddenly to these digital first new modern businesses around ride sharing and delivery. Um, what's really needed is a new channel. What's really needed for the mobility economy is real-time communication that truly is at the point of need and can connect is flexible enough and rich enough to connect all these different stakeholders in a transaction at the time of need. So let's talk a little bit about what that might be. We think at Sendbird and what we've seen talking to our customers is this is in app chat and voice and video. It is an experience, a conversation that happens inside of the mobile app in the context of the transaction that's occurring. So uh, just on the left, I've put one of those SMS screens from the past. <clears throat> and on the right, I have put um, an in-app chat screen. And you can think about the same conversation and just look at the difference in the richness and the quality of experience you're giving to your customer. And I've called out a few things here on the right. Um, if you look at the top, you can see Tom is the driver's name. So this, you know, this example could be a ride-sharing example where the driver and the customer have had to connect because let's say the driver could not find the customer right away. Um, you can see the driver's name. You can see if they're online um, so that the customer has an indication of presence or, or vice versa. You can see the profile of this person, a picture to humanize it know that you're talking to a real person, that this person is on their way, that this person is looking after you. You can get their communication. Um, you can integrate the elements of the transaction. In this case, maybe a map or a shopping basket, or in the case of delivery, it may be a food order item. You can integrate that into the conversation because typically the conversation centers around a transaction hey, you're supposed to pick me up at six o'clock or I ordered you know, the pizza, right? Those, the context of the transaction is super critical to ensuring a smooth conversation. When you have the conversation in app, you can then bring in those transactional elements into the conversation and give all parties a shared understanding of what they're talking about. Um, and then you can be on brand. You can provide that rich branded, 
experience that your customers expect when they come to your mobile app. And what in-app chat gives you is much, much more than just simple sending a message from user A to user B. Um, you can think of it as almost like your own personal WhatsApp embedded inside of your app. We all use WhatsApp. We all know how rich it is. You get the two checks when uh, the message has been sent and read. It turns blue when it's been read. You know, all those little, little things that make for a very rich experience in our personal lives, you can embed all of that through a proper in-app chat experience inside of your own app. So you get the best of both worlds. You don't have to give up the experience and the data and your customer to Facebook or Apple or Google, but you get all of that rich functionality inside of your own app, inside of a conversation. So it's not just connecting user A to user B with a simple message, but providing a rich conversational experience. So what are some examples of that? You've got suggested replies. You may want to prompt customers and drivers and delivery providers with easy to say things like, I'll be right there, running late, be there in five. This allows a driver who should be keeping their hands on the wheel and looking ahead, a very easy, easy way to, to, to provide a reply or a customer who is busy and doesn't want to type things. Um, and it keeps the engagement, it keeps the conversation flowing and helps get to a, a, a good outcome. Another one is moderation. This is so, so important. People do not spend enough time thinking about moderation. And um, you know what happens to your customer experience that you've worked so hard on till now when the driver maybe uses bad language? Or maybe you're thinking, my driver would never use bad language, but maybe it's not bad language. Maybe they're just rude. Maybe they're curt. Maybe they don't know the, the proper niceties of, um, of speaking to a customer. Maybe there's an attachment that's uploaded with some inappropriate content. Um, you know, all of these things are really serious. You can get not just lost customers, but lawsuits, right? Um, and so many platforms around the world think about moderation too late. And it's usually after there's already some kind of a crisis that's happened at least once, if not twice, before they start to think about, hey, all these thousands, millions of conversations my customers are having, maybe I should moderate that. Maybe I should have some AI type moderation or rules-based moderation, doing things like catching bad words and starring them out or blocking them beforehand. Um, super, super important. Again, with a strong in-app chat experience, you get all of that. You push that conversation out to SMS or WhatsApp or a third-party platform. And again, you lose control of that conversation. Uh, something like delivery receipts. This is just a small little feature, but so important to giving the other side confidence that my message was sent, that my message was received, that my message was read. If you're offline, if you're in a bad area, that it'll cache it, queue it up and retry it and eventually send it, right? These are, these sound like little things, but they're so important to give all sides the confidence that, you know, I can keep waiting here because the driver's on the way, or I know that the delivery provider now has that updated address information I wanted to share. And then again, you might want to escalate to voice, right? Sometimes you just need to get on the phone. This could be an escalation to voice over IP, which is what we would recommend, or it could be an escalation to the telco net networks and have voice go over the traditional telco channels. But having easy escalation to voice, you might not wanna start at voice um, um, and start in the chat space, or you may start at voice and then go to chat. Either way, you should have the flexibility to use which uh, in-app communication channel that makes sense for your, for your need and what that transaction needs at that moment in time. And really, the purpose of all of this is to create a better experience, a more seamless experience. I've just shown three stakeholders here, the customer, the driver, and maybe the support agent if they need to get involved. But there's this can be a pretty complicated conversation very quickly. You may have the restaurant owner. You may have a delivery person who stays within the store 
versus who actually drives to the customer site, right? Pickers versus riders, um, as a lot of what, uh, as this supply chain gets more and more complex, especially in the very high velocity delivery models. Um, so the idea being that with in-app chat and in-app voice over IP, you can bring all of those stakeholders into two-way, three-way, four-way conversations as needed. You may not have four people talking, but at least everybody's getting that data. Everybody's getting a shared understanding. Everybody can see what the customer said, right? So it's really important that you have this kind of flexibility. And we're seeing a lot of companies now wanting to do this. Maybe the first, first point of escalation is with the driver. The second point is with the support agent. And now rather than playing a game of telephone, you connect all three in a conversation and get the matter resolved quickly and efficiently, and hopefully keep the customer happy and keep the customer coming back. Um, and we are seeing our customers and many of the companies we talk to see massive results. Um, a global ride sharing company, Super App in Southeast Asia saw 75% reduction in cancellation rates. Um, when they launched the in-app chat and a food delivery provider um, in Europe saw 65% reduction in phone calls in the first 12 months when they launched in-app chat. So these are, again, this is a massive cost saving because this is one of the most um, uh, cost line items for ride sharing and delivery companies. So these are, these are huge results. Um, all through the power of creating that real-time mobile conversation. Um, one of our largest customers, DoorDash, I know based in the US, um, launched mobile communication with over the Sendbird platform and uh, they replaced SMS in order to create an in-app chat experience. Rather than building that in-app chat functionality themselves, they chose a third-party vendor like Sendbird. Um, they chose Sendbird and use connected over our APIs to our platform, seamlessly integrated that into their application. Their customers have no idea they're using Sendbird. We are an invisible, behind the scenes, white label, chat, voice, and video platform. Their customers are never leave the DoorDash app and see this very rich, branded DoorDash experience under the hood powered by Sendbird. And we can see this quote from um, one of their uh, uh, engineers on the project who said, now that we don't rely on phone numbers and now that the customer doesn't have to leave the app, they've seen higher deliverability rates, higher engagement rates and more saved transactions and a reduced non-delivery rate, which was their key metric they were optimizing for non-delivery, bringing that down. And, um, and I'm sure that's a similar concern shared by many different uh, delivery companies and ride-sharing companies around the world. Um, another customer, iFood, which is the largest, or one of the largest food delivery companies in Brazil, um, they reduced contact rates to the call center with Sendbird by 35%. So again, by connecting the driver, the delivery provider, and the customer in a real-time mobile conversation within the iFood app, they were able to reduce phone calls and emails and angry support requests to their call center by 35%. And again, a huge, huge cost saving uh, to the company. Um, so we believe you know, in-app chat, voice, and even video is the future of mobile communication. SMS, we believe, is the old way. That is the legacy way of mobile communication. And keeping the conversation within the app, um, whether, it's, whether it's a text conversation or a voice or a video, is really where the world is going and where many of the leading mobility companies have already gone. Um, and again, there's really three main things here that you're gaining that make this so important. One. You create that rich branded experience rather than what SMS can provide. Two, you integrate it into the transaction and the app's workflows into the shopping basket, into the restaurant order, into the, the payment, into the location sharing, whatever it is that your app 
uh, that your transaction demands at that moment can be integrated into the conversation. And finally, you own the analytics and you own the data, and you're not giving that away to a Facebook, a WhatsApp, a WeChat, a Telegram, or wherever else your customer is now having this conversation. Um, who are we? We are Senbird. Senbird is the, we were founded out of Seoul um, in South Korea. We are the leading user engagement platform, helping not just mobility companies, but lots of different digital first businesses, mobile centric businesses, build rich in-app communication to engage their users, to create a better customer experience and to improve their key business metrics like reduction in cancellations, improvement and increase in transactions, reduction in support costs. Uh, you can trust us with your business. We've been around for quite a while. Again, we are a white label platform behind the scenes. So you don't hear about us. You don't know who Sendbird is because the way we get integrated into our customers, you would never see the Sendbird name. Um, but we're actually quite big. We've been around for five plus years. We have 150 million monthly active users talking on our platform every day. So scattered between all our different customers, 150 million monthly active users talk on the Sendbird platform. So I truly believe we're probably the biggest platform you've never heard of, um, exchanging about two and a half billion messages a month. Uh, we have 100 plus people building chat, voice and video experiences um, within our company and over 240 employees um, and over 100,000 developers building on top of our platform. Um, and those are the developers of our customers. Um, and we power the largest apps in the world. Um, I talked about DoorDash and iFood, um, you know, Delivery Hero, the largest delivery provider in Europe, um, Woober Brothers, the largest delivery provider in Korea, Z Delivery in Brazil, Just Eat Takeaway in Europe, Ola in India, all of these global mobility leaders use Sember today to power in-app chat um, within their mobile app. So chances are, if you are, if you've ever talked to your driver on Ola or your delivery uh, provider on, in Woober Brothers, you've already chatted on Sendbird. And, uh, and that's the beauty of our platform. We provide the heavy tech that sits underneath the hood that you don't have to build yourself. And you know, we don't just, of course, sell to mobility companies, mobile communication and in-app communication is a global trend across industries. Marketplaces use it to connect buyers and sellers. Healthcare providers use it to connect doctors and patients. We've seen this uh, really boom over the last 12, 18 months um, when it became hard to go into a hospital for uh, elective reasons and telehealth really boomed. Um, so connecting doctors and patients, nurses and patients um, in conversations within the mobile app. Um, community, companies like Reddit and Yahoo, um, dating companies, um, gaming companies, you know, gamers talking inside of the game is really big. Um, so we ha really have customers uh, across, across industries um, and uh, with a big customer base um, in mobility. And I've highlighted a few of some of the leaders on this slide. Uh, we have three products. Um, again, I talked about our chat product. Um, we also have separate calls for voice and video. Um, and we have Sender Desk, which is our customer support backend agent interface. So you can use our chat product with your own support backend, like a serve, you know, like a Salesforce or a Zendesk or whatever it might be, or you can use our product and mix and match and uh, be flexible. And we don't really require you to use more than one of these products. Um, and lastly, I'll just talk a little bit about what are the benefits of Sendbird. Um, you know, we provide a better customer experience through better, richer conversations within your mobile app. Um, because we are a platform that comes with everything in it, you get all of this on day one, all of these features, all of these capabilities. So you get very fast time to market. We all know the frustration of getting excited about doing something and then going to your engineering team and then telling you, oh, this is gonna be six months. Oh, this is gonna be 12 months. It's gonna be 18 months. With Sendbird, you don't have to worry about that. You get all of those capabilities, all of that, um, uh, all, all of that customer experience uh, in our, on our platform 
that integrates completely seamlessly into your mobile app. And finally, for engineering leaders, you get peace of mind. This is a highly scalable, highly reliable, and proven platform servicing some of the most largest and demanding apps in the world, like Ola, like Delivery Hero, uh, like DoorDash, um, like Wuwa Brothers. So uh, just the takeaway, um, these are some of the largest, most demanding mobile apps in the world, um, and they're all Sendbird customers. So with that, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and it was great being with all of you here today. Bye-bye.